In this video, we're going to be taking an in-depth look at the humble wash. A wash is one of several techniques you can use to really make the detail on your models pop. Now this usually works by adding contrast around raised details and in panel lines, effectively tricking the eye into believing there is more surface depth than there actually is. And washes, as well as simulating shadows, can also be used to represent dirt and grime. So, they're a really useful, staple modeling device. But what is a wash? A wash, as modeled by this pot of Citadel Agrax Earthshade, is essentially a highly diluted paint. They are made to be able to run around details, and the thin consistency is key to making this happen. There are hundreds of pre-made washes on the market today, giving you specialist effects like dedicated panel liners, rust, dirt effects, grime, and many more. These come in both enamel and acrylic, and are designed to give you the effect you want without the hassle of having to mix your own, or even decide what color to use. So, let's do a quick summary and roundup of the pre-made washes. The benefits of pre-made washes are, they're pre-mixed, often giving you a good consistency out of the bottle. You often get model-specific colors. You can pick up the effect and color you want, no hassle. They're also very easy to use. Just shake the bottle and go. So, what about the downsides? First off, you've got the price. A single bottle can set you back up to a fiver. That's almost seven US dollars. The shelf life, especially with enamel washes, I've found some brands perish after a few years. I've had some bottles coagulate or go super grainy. And lastly, they can be fairly inflexible. These products do pretty much what they say on the bottle. That's not to say they don't have other uses, but a rust wash is fairly targeted. Okay, let's take a look at homemade washes. A homemade wash is exactly that, a wash you create with the materials you already have. These can be made yourself from primarily oil, enamel or acrylic paints. To make your own wash, you simply mix a small amount of paint with its compatible thinner, usually with a very diluted ratio. So, for oil paint, you would use a low odor thinner for oil painting or a specific model thinner. And for acrylics, you can use water or the paint brand's proprietary thinner. Also, a drop of flow improver can help reduce the surface tension often found with acrylic products. So in short, whatever paints you have, you can usually make a wash from them. So, let's take a look at the benefits of making your own wash. There is a huge colour choice available, meaning you can mix any colour you like. They're also versatile. You can increase or decrease the opacity of the wash depending on how much you thin your paint. And also, it's easy to use and easy to make. It's a really simple process. If I can do it, anyone can. So, let's take a look at the negatives of making your own wash. Firstly, where to start? With the amount of products available, it can be daunting selecting what products or colors to use. Always buy the best you can afford as this will help ensure consistent results. There's also a bit of a learning curve involved. Whilst the process is simple, you'll need to play around with color and consistency to achieve your desired result. Also, some of the colors aren't model specific. If you're using artist oils, for example, color mixing will probably be needed as the tube colors aren't model specific. Before we get around to applying a wash, let's take a look at paint compatibility. The basic rule for washes is to use the opposite paint from your base color. So oil or enamel over acrylic, or acrylic over enamel. Of course, it's not all black and white. Acrylic is fairly inert, so in most cases, you can apply an acrylic wash over most surfaces. Problems start to happen when you use an acrylic thinner to remove any excess wash when working over an acrylic surface. As you can see, the acrylic thinner reacted with the acrylic base coat, leaving a bit of a mess. In theory, this shouldn't happen over fully cured enamel as the paint film is much more durable. When using enamel or oil washes over an acrylic layer, the thinners don't usually react with the acrylic paint. 
You can see that even as I apply the enamel wash to the enamel surface, the flow isn't optimal. The acrylic paint handles the enamel very well. Enamel over enamel, however, won't give you good results. The carry of the wash will more than likely eat into your base layer, leaving you with a mess. Let's take a look at some different paint finishes and see how they affect the flow of the wash on your model. I've prepared this Meng Rolls-Royce armoured car with three different paint finishes. I've got a gloss surface that was painted with Mr. Colour GX112 Gloss Super Clear, a satin surface painted with VMS Varnish HD Satin, and a matte surface, VMS Varnish HD Matte. Here I'm using an orange rust wash for visibility. On a glossy surface, the wash runs immediately around details, but because the surface is so smooth, the paint tends to slip around. Gloss is the traditional wash surface because the paint flows so well. However, the wash doesn't adhere as well as it would a satin or matte surface. On a satin surface, a wash is a bit more controlled. It flows around raised details and doesn't tend to slip. Because the surface is slightly less smooth than the gloss, the wash tends to grip a bit better. On a matte surface, the effect of a wash is more immediate. A matte surface has more grip, meaning the paint stays pretty much where you put it. A matte surface is much more likely to stain than the other two, so you need to be very precise with your application. In the process of applying a wash, you may need to correct your work, so the ability to be able to remove it is quite important. Let's see how easy it is to remove it from our gloss, satin and matte surfaces. Once the thinner has reactivated the paint on the gloss surface, the wash is very easy to remove. After a few seconds, the wash comes off. With the surface being so smooth though, it's easy to remove too much and lose the effect. This is the main reason I moved away from using a gloss surface for my washes. On the satin surface, the wash puts up more of a fight. Instead of coming off almost immediately, it takes several passes of thinner before the effect starts to lessen. Because the satin surface is slightly rougher than the gloss, it's more absorbent, meaning the wash can stain your paint finish, especially noticeable with this rusty orange. But with more subtle colours, the effect is much more subdued. On a matte surface, especially one as good as this VMS matte varnish, removing a wash is a lot more tricky. As you can see, the light orange has almost completely stained the finish, leaving it stuck fast. Although I can lessen the effect somewhat, the wash has effectively fused with the finish. But this isn't always the case. Depending on what finish you use, practice and familiarity with your materials is key, and it's worth practicing on every surface and working out what works best for you. Anyway, that's enough talking about washes. Now we're going to look at the three most popular ways on how to apply a wash. The first wash we're going to look at applying is a panel line wash. This is primarily used for highlighting panel lines, most often on aircraft. Quite simply, this type of wash is just touched along the panel line. Capillary action then does most of the work. Enamel products are my favourite for this type of wash. Their slow drying time means you can adjust the result and clean up any unsightly mess. Now the wash has been applied, and to make these panel lines look crisp and clean, some of the excess wash needs to be removed. For this, I use a cotton bud and wipe the paint away in the direction of airflow. When panel lining on a tank, just be careful to remove any excess.
Next up is a sludge or all over wash. This works great for areas where details are tightly packed, making it really hard to clean up. So for example, a radial engine or a Viking wolfskin cloak. The wash is applied heavily, covering all the details you're working over. The wash then pulls up in all the recessed areas, giving you lots of shadows and contrast. As you can see though, a sludge wash can tint your base color. So just bear this in mind before you jump in. If you feel you've gone too heavy with a sludge wash, just dry your brush off on a paper towel and wick away the excess. You can see the sludge wash has added a lot of texture and depth. Result. Next up is one of my favourites, a pin wash. For this, I'm going to use my favourite mix of French Ultramarine and Burnt Umber Artist Oils. A true black can look really stark unless you want some extreme contrast. I find this mix, one commonly used in the painting world, extremely versatile and useful. You can tweak the amount of blue or brown for different results. More brown will give you a more grimy finish, whilst adding more blue makes it look a bit more oily. A pin wash, like a panel line wash, needs to be quite precise. It needs to be applied with a fine brush. I'm using a 2.0 Kalinsky Sable. When you touch your loaded brush to the detail on the model, capillary action draws the paint around the detail. And if you make sure you're nice and precise, you won't need to go and clean up any areas later. If you want to increase the amount of depth or contrast, just increase the amount of paint to thinner. Similarly to a panel line wash, you can also apply a pin wash into crevices and other areas to give them more depth. And here's the finished result. The pin wash has really made the details pop and added some interest to the surface. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed my video on washes. If you did, why not hit that like button? And if you haven't already, why not subscribe? And also, if you want to join this list of fantastic people, why not head over to my Patreon? 2020 has been a terrible year. We all know it. And hopefully, 2021 is going to be much better. And I also really hope 2021 is going to be better for you guys as well. Anyway, I'm James from LPJ Models. Thanks for watching.